I still need to do a drill, so I'm going to do a drill on this video. This particular preform was done by somebody else. I've got a bunch of them that I'll be napping through in the upcoming videos. Who made this? I don't know. And what is the material? I don't know yet, but I might be able to guess after I start getting into it. Might be able to guess. So let's see. First point of the of the day. Sun's on my back, which is okay. It's gotten kind of cool overnight. So it'll be cool all day, so I don't mind the sun on my back. Yeah, it looks like Georgetown. Surprise, surprise. Although, it looks like Georgetown, but it's probably Edwards, Edwards Plateau. Chert. Now, the previous napper had a hard time thinning it down. But yeah, I'm just going to make a drill. I, 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 I said, think I said that already, right? Maybe not, but I did promise a drill in a previous video. But I, I think I ended up breaking that particular one. Yeah. So I got another one here. It's pretty narrow and thick, so it's a good candidate. working as a drill. I went out and I bought another grinding wheel and broke it up. This one's a little bit more coarse, which is good. The coarser ones, I don't have to work as hard to get it to remove the sharp edges. I still got pieces of the finer grit wheels down there just in case I might need them for something. Okay, so just at, at random, I'm doing this at random. Just taking off opportunistic flakes here and there as usual. Hitting pretty hard in this stage. These preforms that are already worked by somebody else, they're fairly easy to work in this thick state. At least I think so. Apparently the nappers that were napping this didn't think so, but I can really hit this really hard and, and get some of those thinning flakes to, to travel on a thick piece like this. Although it's not advantageous to have something this thick to start with if you want something really, really thin. because you lose a lot of the edge to try to thin it down. But I'm not going to try to thin it, I'm just going to try to shape it into a reasonably, reasonably long drill that's not too thick. I'm going to try not to lose any length on it. I don't need to thin down the base much at all. Right, because it's just going to be a drill, it's not going to be hafted to a narrow shaft. I can, a drill can be hafted to a thick shaft or a handle. It doesn't have to be hafted to something narrow, like a projectile point would be. First point of the day, so I don't want to mess this up, so I'm not talking too much. 
once I start getting into these, uh, as the day progresses, then I'll be able to chat a little bit more, I think. Right now, it is possible to snap this in half because I don't quite have a feel for the material just yet. If I was, if I had started from the very beginning when I, if I had a spall of this first, I would already have the feeling for the stone at this stage. So I wouldn't be too worried about snapping it. Although, you know, snapping always is a risk, no matter what. is a risk but it's not that much of a risk if you have a feeling for the stone so it's pretty much the same as the smaller drill like preform on the previous video it's pretty much it's pretty much done as far as the bulk being removed now I just have to shape it it doesn't have to be thin to be a drill. Now, why don't I make a really long drill? Because this is one of the longest pieces I have. I don't have a really long piece. And if I did, I wouldn't be wasting my material on drill. Nope, nope. Now, did the Native Americans make drills from scratch, you know, instead of re reusing something that used to be a projectile point or a knife? That's a very good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that one. I would tend to say that most drills back in the day were made from refurbished points of some sort. And some of the things that look like drills were not really drills, but knives, just very narrow knives. And if it has a curve in it, that's one indication that it was not actually used to drill. Because when you have a curve in it, you can't twist it like this and, and expect it to stay in one piece. It'll snap if it has a curve in it. So a curve is either a perforator, just simply for poking holes, or as a knife for cutting. And you can sharpen the edge of the drill looking thing and cut with it. It still can be used as a cutting tool, even though it's very narrow, especially if you're cutting meat or something really easy to cut. Because something easy to cut won't, uh, won't break the stone if, you're, if you've got a curved blade. So the, the real drills are very straight. The ones that are used to actually drill holes or have to be straight. It's just physics. All right, so it's pretty regularized. Maybe, maybe a couple more flakes to get rid of some more of the lumpage. But I'm, I'm going to take a pressure flicker to it first. I could do this with indirect percussion with a smaller tip, but I'm going to use pressure because I need to warm up. This is my first point of the day. Okay. Yeah, I should probably zoom in. Everyone wants a, a zoomed-in view of this pressure flaking. This pressure flaking stuff. They want to know how much I abrade. They want to know what angles the edge has on it. I'm pretty much abrading just perpendicular to the edge, just brushing off the sharp spot. And I'm just going to opportunistically flake. 
just take off the, the lumps and stuff like that. Now let me see. This is, yeah, this is probably Edwards Plateau Church. It's a little bit tougher than Georgetown. I can already tell it's, very, it's tougher. Because the steel is slipping off. And I am going to use steel mainly because I don't want to wear down my copper right now. I found another nail I can use. I thought that was my last nail on this particular pressure flaker, but it's not. I have one more. But I don't want to use it up just yet. i got to order some more. Yeah, I guess I will use the indirect flaker because this material is a little bit too tough for the pressure flaker. Yes, yes. I don't want to ruin my wrist already. Still got it. Two more days after this of intense napping. Yep, that's much easier. Mainly downward strikes, because I don't need to, I don't need these to travel at all. I don't need these flakes to go anywhere, except a little bit inward. A little bit inward, yeah, halfway is perfect. Drills work really well if there's a median ridge. It makes them stronger. So halfway would be perfect. And if it's got a lump in it, it doesn't matter too much as long as it's the edge is straight so it won't snap while you're drilling. Yeah, so halfway is good. Yep. Sufficient. Now it's going to get a lot more narrow than this, but I'm trying to make it regular. Having a regular preform for anything, even a drill, makes it so much easier. So much easier to develop a strategy for finishing it. If it's all lumpy through the whole process, you're doing a lot of damage control, and you might mess up the contour, the outside outline. So it's best to have it regular. When you get down to this stage, this stage is the, the shaping stage. I'm going to thin the stem down a little bit. Yeah. Just so it's reasonably thin enough to half. That's good enough. That's good enough for the thinness of the stem. Okay. So I did the ends first, the, the tip and the base, and now I'm going to work in the middle. Same strategy with everything. I can knock off the sharp edges with the indirect percussion tool and then I'll go back and abrade it. And yeah, I'm knocking off some sharp edges and some thin edges because I'll be doing another pass of indirect percussion to get rid of this, this lump on this side. See, it's pretty straight here, but it's not that straight up here. The edge, I need to straighten it out too. It's a little bit curved, you know, that way in the middle. So I've got to take off a lot from the middle to get that edge straightened and then get the side straight too. The side is not as important as the edge, but it's much easier to do the edge if the side is, you know, the top surface is straight as well. 
it's easier to construct a straight edge. Why? Because the, uh, the flaking is not as difficult. The flakes will travel over a flattened area much, much easier. Sometimes it doesn't, so there are exceptions. Sometimes it's easier to flake over a rounded surface. But in this case, with this material, I think it would be easier to run flakes on a flatter surface because it's, it's kind of tough. The tougher it is, the better your surface needs to be to run long flakes. I don't need to run long flakes on the drill except where there's a lump, right? I am going to need to run some long flakes when there's a lump. So I just got to make sure I'm prepared for that eventual circumstance. Okay. All right, I knocked off most of the thick spots and the thin spots. You gotta, you gotta knock off both the thick and the thin. I don't know if I've gone over that too much. To regularize it, get rid of the thick and the thin. Usually I just get rid of the thin and leave the thick because you can knock flakes off using the thick spots. But in this case, I'm almost to the final dimension. So I'm not going to be needing to uh, do too much heavy percussion with thick spots. I'll just be doing percussion with medium, medium abraded spots. It still took the edge down quite a bit. even though it's, it's been uh, messed with with the indirect percussion flaker, the abrader is still removing quite a bit of the edge, which is fine, fine, fine. It just shows that I needed to abrade. I can create a bevel on both sides, on all four sides, I can create beveling to make this drill. That's one way to do it with pressure, just bevel it all the way around, create a diamond cross section. But in this case, I'm just going to do it randomly because it's less fatiguing. I get to use my indirect percussion flaker more and it's quicker. It's quicker if I don't do a pattern. Just randomly flake it. All right. I don't want to... Th I'm going to run a few flakes across the tip just to straighten it, not to thin it too much. was almost too big of a flake. Yeah, I want a more like that one. Yeah, I do want them to come off like that. Halfway mark. Am I using a certain amount of force? Yes. It's very subtle. Most of it's controlled by the subconscious. The subconscious kind of knows the feeling. It's taking over because it knows how much force feels right. My conscious mind knows where to put the force 
but the subconscious knows how much. They both work together. All right, so it's straightened out pretty good. There is a lump here back on that first side. Let's see, how do I attack that one? I'm going to create a specific platform to see if I can get it that way. Well, might as well take back the whole edge here. Hold on. See where I'm at. Now, in the real world, if I was going to use this as a drill, I would measure the, let's say, for instance, I would, I would use a foreshaft with a tang to measure how big of a drill I need and how deep I need to go into the main shaft. I would already have a foreshaft ready, right? If I, if, if I did have a foreshaft ready, I would have that as a pattern. If not, I would create the drill first and then fit the foreshaft into what I created, into the uh, reamed out hole in the main shaft that I created. That kind of thing. But you know, you work together with the foreshaft diameter most four shafts are around a centimeter wide. Let me be a little bit more, right? That's about a half inch, a little bit less than a half inch on the average. All right, so did that, I think that did it. Yeah. There might be just one more lump, like right, right there. I don't need too much force to get rid of that one. Supposedly. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the basic shape. Just little refinements here and there. step fracture I can get that later it doesn't even matter on a drill but I'm gonna try to get that anyway maybe I might not even need to worry about it if it becomes an issue I'll take it off okay If I see it become an issue, so I'm just going to pretty much bevel it or um, wh whichever works better, random or beveling. Right now I'm going to start with just the, the pass, clean up pass. My goal eventually is to create a straight edge. It doesn't have to be straight, but I find that using the stone drills, because I've used them before, if the edge is straight, it's just easier to, to deal with, easier to resharpen. It's all curved and it, and it snaps somewhere. Like if it, a piece comes off the edge and it's all curved and wonky, it's difficult to repair it.
And the reason why it's difficult is because you, you look at it and you want to straighten it out. If it's got a big old bite taken out somewhere, you want to try to straighten it out a little bit. And you end up going, man, I need to repair the whole thing. Not just the one little snap on the edge. But if it's already regular, you get a snap on the edge, you can take off just a little bit. Just so that little that snapped area isn't the dull spot that's slowing everything down. You can leave a snapped little bite taken out. It's not going to slow things down much. A large bite will. So you just reduce it down when you resharpen. Reduce the, the width of the bite, the width of the dull area. You reduce it by creeping up on it from either side and sharpening the whole edge as you go. So the goal, again, is just to get a straight edge. Stem, I don't need to worry about it too much. Just can't be too lumpy. It just makes it easier to haft if it's regular. Nice and regular. I could put like a, a certain kind of stem on it, I suppose. Suppose maybe notched all right so yeah it doesn't even need to be symmetrical but it, it bugs me if it's not symmetrical At least a little bit symmetrical. I'm not even looking at that side right now because I'm, I'm just trimming off the sharp edges for a pass on this side. Probably should grind it a little bit. Makes it easier to do that pass. Yeah. I'm not driving these flakes inward too much because I don't want a thin edge. It's difficult to, to maintain the edge of the drill if it's thin when you're using it. You want it to be robust. So you don't want a big bulb of 
pressure or a bubble of percussion near the edge for drills. Now, if it's a perforator, that's fine. You can have large bulbs of pressure or percussion near the edge, so it'll thin it like a hollow ground effect. But if you're drilling through wood and you have a hollow ground effect and the edge is really thin, it's going to break off, especially if you're drilling into antler or something. And yeah, there were four shafts mounted into antler sockets on some, some weapons. And there's various other reasons why you would drill into antler as well. All right, so that's pretty much the basics. I'm out of time on this one. I'm just taking back the sharp edge a little bit. Every time I do this, it gets straighter and straighter. Every time I do a pass, I can make the edge straighter and straighter. And you want it straight this way and this way, right? This is a little bit wide for a four shaft on a projectile point, but it's not that wide for a spear, spear point. But on the next segment, I'm going to take it down further and make it more narrow. Okay.